One being can only do so much. The actual running of an empire, the day-to-day, -day, requires the diligence and effort of millions of souls. Most only receive orders. Others get orders and pass them on. But you? You only give the orders. You are running this civilization through machinations of light and shadow. An interface. Welcome to Module 1 of the Stellaris Tutorial, Empire.CSS. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night, depending on your location and habitual viewing routines. My name is Nova Kane, and this is Episode 1, or rather Chapter 1, Module 1, of the Stellaris Tutorial, Empire.CSS. We're going to be looking at the interface, we're going to be looking at everything the interface can lead you to, and a lot of the things we're going to be looking at are going to be covered in the chapters to come. So this really is a primer. Um, so we are going to start... Ahoy! Nova Kane in the editing room here, treating you to this wonderful itinerary, so you can skip to where you might need to. Wasn't that a lovely thought of mine? If you agree, give the video a like, or perhaps even a lovely comment. Um, with new game, just gonna press N because I'm super fly. And, uh, oh yeah, this is a custom race that I built. Um, uh, about, yeah, if, uh, you know, the Matrix, the Matrix series zero is one, yeah. It's just, if you haven't seen the Matrix, um, or particularly the Animatrix, the second renaissance, do, do check it out. Anyway, you won't have that, obviously. I, I might upload it, uh, who knows. Right, United Nations of Earth, it's a starter race. We're going to be starting with them. Select. Right, game details. This is all relatively self-explanatory. Um, depends really on the length of the game you want, as well as the kind of hardware you're running the game on. So, small, you can run that on most machines. Medium mid-tier, uh, large and especially huge, uh, need lots of RAM running quite quickly and a nice beefy processor to boot. Um, even then you still might get some performance issues late game. Uh, galaxy shape elliptical, like the Mickey Way, uh, a ring galaxy will put, uh, well, like a, like a ring, so your colonization, your expansion will all be around getting a bigger slice of a, a circle. Um, AI empires, those are of course your potential allies and your enemies, basically your competitors if uh, you are looking to satisfy the victory condition. Um, not everyone does, but we'll get into that a bit later. Um, a really lovely feature, we can randomize within um, some tolerance. So obviously we're not going to be doing on a huge galaxy, we'll do it on a medium one. Um, so we can have up to 18 or zero, um, but have some fallen empires, or just, or just none, just, just us, in the whole galaxy. That would be nice, uh, but no, we're not going to do that. So we're going to reset to default, um, and we are going to randomize these. Advanced AI starts. What's that? Um, so imagine if another uh, empire, another spacefaring empire, achieved spaceflight. 300 years before you did and they happen to be next door <laughs> they don't always uh, start next door but they do present a significant challenge I think it's unfair and unbalanced so I always leave it off um, as for the rest um... oh no that's fallen empires so no we'll keep them one to two they're fun uh, advanced AR starts off um... and so we'll have between four and nine let's have between five and ten um, traditions, text and tradition costs, uh, again, if it's, if, if you don't know the game inside out, leave this all at one time, so that's fine, um, uh, the length of game, 
Uh, the, if you have a victory year, if you like, if you want the game to end, um, then leave it at sort of 25, 25, 50, maybe something like that. If you really want a really long game, uh, the year 3000, or you can turn it off to have just an endless game where you just achieve whatever goal you set out. Um, right, let's go to difficulty. Uh, so we go, oh gosh. We go from Cadet, Ensign, Captain, Commodore, Admiral, Grand Admiral. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So medium would be number three, Captain. Uh, scaling difficulty. Game gets harder over time. Again, leave that off unless you're finding it pathetic. Uh, but I'd suggest uh, maybe going up a step before going on to scaling difficulty. AI aggressiveness, normal. Um, you can have them all to be bloodthirsty or pacifists. It's up to you. Empire placement, random. I think that's the best way. Uh, advanced neighbors, off. So if you have uh, some um, advanced AI starts, you could say whether they were nearby or not. Um, first game, leave this all there. Guaranteed habitable worlds, leave that to two. Otherwise, you could find yourself in a horrific situation. Caravaneers, if you have the relevant expansion packs, um, they're fun. Leave them on. Um, Iron Man mode, like all Stellaris Grand Strategy games, an Iron Man mode has one save game. The only way to cheat is to actually go into Windows Explorer, create copies of the same save. Um, so you can't save at any time. It only auto saves on the month and when you quit out. Um, but I'm a bit of an achievement whore, so I'm going to turn this on. But that means you can't use the console, uh, so we're actually gonna, gonna turn this off. As we embark now, onto the first days of the United Nations of Earth. Right, I'm gonna read this all in a dramatic voice, if you'd like to, you know, not endure that, skip to here. Much has happened since modern humans first emerged in Africa some 200,000 years ago. Our kind spread rapidly across most of the globe and soon the first civilizations took form. Scientific progress has been swift, though not without cost. Wars claimed millions of lives even before the atom was tamed. And the turmoil of the 21st century saw the mandate of the United Nations gradually expanded in an effort to create stability. By the early 22nd century, the supranational organization had become a de facto world government. Though some still resent the power wielded by the UN, as evidenced during the Mar Mauritanian police action of 88, few can deny the technological breakthroughs that have come out of its, sponsors re of its sponsored research programs. With the recent completion of the first true starships, mankind is about to embark on a new era of space exploration. Begin! Okay, in the entirety of this video, we are not going to to turn to, to, to go forward in time. This is all about the interface. And as is tradition, we are going to go clockwise from the very top left. Again, every Paradox game has your country screen, and it is here. We'll have your lovely flag on it. So... Make sure you have a cup of tea, make sure you're relaxed, and if needed, have a notepad or, you know, notepad.exe window open, if you'd like to take notes and be very diligent students. Because when we click this button, we will begin the grand Stellaris tutorial. Ah, here we go. Right. Government. How do you govern your people? How do you interact with them? What's going on? Let's click. So, we can see our nation name. We can change it. Oh, and take a screenshot because press the wrong button. So, we are the United Nations of Trainees now. Um, and now we can see our president, Dolores Mwanga. 
Um, she is a human female. Skill level, two out of five. We'll talk more about that in uh, the colonization and uh, research modules. Um, she also has some traits. Uh, we'll talk about traits um, in another module. But we can see the effects of these traits. Tool tips are your best friend in learning this game. There is a tutorial, of course, um, like a, an official one. Um, we can see the governing ethics, again, module for those, and civics as well. These all define what you can do um, in terms of the game and what your beliefs are. So egalitarian, obviously, is the belief that everyone is born equal. Um, and so this gives an empire modifier. Um, those are the numbers upon numbers uh, that I mentioned in the introduction to this program. And we can see that uh, faction influence means nothing to you. Um, or maybe it does. Maybe you're just watching this for funsies. In which case, welcome. Um, and specialist output plus 10%. We'll figure out what that means when we talk about economics. Xenophile? Good for neighbours. We'll talk more about that in the contact module. Um, trade value, diplomatic influ influence costs, that's very good. So, that's the government screen. There are three tabs. Government, demographics. Uh, this shows how many species uh, are in your empire. Of course, we only have one, human. Um, we live on a continental world, which is best for us, because our species loves continental worlds. And we have 24 pops. Uh, if you want to role play, I would say that one pop is equivalent to 100,000 people, I would say. Um, although this would say that only 2.4 billion people on Earth at the time. Maybe that was all the wars they were talking about. Who knows? Um, and then we have possibly one of the greatest things ever. Your advisor. So, again, you won't have all of these. Or you might not, unless you've got all the expansions. Particularly Utopia. Um, I think Utopia was the one that added the, the advisors. Um... But yeah, we've got quite quite a few. Um, there are some downloadable from the workshop. Here I go! <laughs> <clears throat> Professional. Um, and uh, if anyone who played StarCraft 2... New specimen must mm. experiment. Mm, lovely. And any 40k lovers. These alien savages must be taught to kneel when in the presence of their betters. Shall I initiate purging protocols? Beautiful. Um, and then, of course, you know, we've got... Nothing is impossible to those who would try. Based. What is based on your own government, on what your civilization stands for at the present moment. But you can change it if you want, uh, to authoritarian. The weak govern, the strong rule. Ooh, chills. Militarist. Cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war. Great bit of Julius Caesar there. Um, we'll sit with the diplomat because she is, she, she's like the female equivalent of the spiffing Brit. Nothing is impossible to those who would try. She said the same. Nothing is impossible. Oh, enough with that. <laughs> so that's the country screen. Um, sometimes she says some really funny things, but uh, only saying that one this time. Thank you. Obviously a bit shy. So. All right, now we're going to talk about the resources in this game. Yes, you might have noticed these three wonderful icons. We'll come to those. Um, so, what have we got? We have energy. Energy credits uh, are the equivalent of, in most respects, are the equivalent of gold. Um, they are used to trade for resources on the galactic market. Um, you can click any resource... Uh, from this one here over to this one here. All five of these. Click it and you will see a, um, a galactic market. And all the transactions are dealt with with energy credits. So generating those is important. Not only to be able to increase your purchasing power. Uh, but also to um, pay the upkeep of additional ships, stations, uh, leaders... Pretty much everything, and star bases as well. We can see that we're losing uh, five uh, energy credits a month, um, thanks to our star bases, of which we have precisely one. So <laughs> let's uh, let's see what we can do about that. So that's energy. 
Minerals. Minerals, well, it's, it's said there, a collective term for basic resources. Um, mainly concerned with constructions on planets. So the constructions of, of districts, of buildings and projects. Uh, that that will all require minerals. Minerals are all. We're gonna we're gonna uh, skip one. We'll come back to that. Um, minerals are also used in the production of consumer goods and alloys. Consumer goods are you know hair dryers, toasters, you know jacuzzis, uh, whatever. Any if you can't eat it, it's a consumer good. Um, and each pop in your uh, in your empire at the moment we've got 24 um, will require a constant supply of consumer goods in addition consumer goods are also used to research technologies so you chuck a few toasters in you chuck some lip gloss and uh, some some mittens and uh, hockey pucks uh, maybe some scaffolding. A scaffolding is not consumer goods. Um, it's, well, it could be. Anyway, anyway, uh, or Novocaine videos, you know, chuck them all into some big machine and you will get science. Uh, so that's, that's always fun. Alloys, I promise we'll come back. Uh, alloys are special combinations of atomic lattices that are used to build starships and voidborne constructs. That is star bases, uh, habitats, and also very large um, projects like Dyson Spheres, Ring Worlds, uh, everything like that. But the, the day to day, uh, you will be using them to create and maintain star fleets, um, or space fleets, or war fleets, or um, peace fleets, however you want to market it, um, as you conquer the galaxy. Um, they're produced from the refinement of minerals. So, the important lesson to learn here, and this is an important uh, lesson about the economy, and we'll cover that uh, in more detail, is that these minerals underpin the production of both this and this, and all of them are critical. So, balancing that is part of the challenge of the game. Food. People need to eat. Only pops, um, only biological pops, obviously, eat food. Mechanical ones have energy. Um, but, yeah, get some, get some farms going, feed your people, because otherwise they'll start starving and, uh, food riots will cause issues. Now we're going to move on to the next one. Influence. What's influence? You can't uh, really build anything. Well, there are only a couple of examples of things that you can really build to create influence. Um... There's a technology that increases it by plus one a month. Um, a lot of influence-related topics we'll cover in the contact module about your relations with other empires. Uh, but influence is needed for major political maneuvering, basically. Uh, so if we go out into the galaxy map, we're going to press this button, or we could press M or E. We'll see that we've got Earth. The United, the United Nations of Trainees. And Gamma's Veil. Oh, it's a nebula. A anyway, anyway, I'm getting distracted. Uh, so, if we wanted to send a... Um, if we wanted to claim a neighbouring system, we'd have to survey it first. But, again, we'll talk about that. Um, I think maybe in the next module. Um, what we would have to do is build a starbase. To claim that system, we'd use a construction ship for that. Um, doing so would cost us influence. It's normally around 75. Um, so that is a, a, a key factor. Unity represents shared visions of our population. Uh, it can be produced on buildings. Um, only one per colony, but it can be produced. Um, and also... It's mainly used to unlock traditions. We've got a whole module on that. Uh, it's going to be all about this screen. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be amazing. So that's what Unity is. Um, research. Research in this game is split into three tiers. Physics, Society and Engineering. And now we are going to address these. 
We're going to right click to dismiss because it's basically saying we're not researching anything. So let's click technology, uh, which is down here. Although we are still going to be going in this um, clockwise direction. And you will see if I wanted to select some research, I have some options. There is no tech tree. And it's the same for the other two. Basically, the lesson is it's difficult to plan your technological path because it's represented by, I, I suppose, what these scientists think is cool at the time. Um, but you can tell uh, if uh, research is going to unlock other research by looking for this icon here. <laughs> yes, and it's going to alert me. I didn't actually select anything. Goodbye, goodbye. Right. Moving on. Special resources. There are seven. Uh, volatile moats, exotic gases, rare crystals, living metal, dro, dark matter, and nanites. Um... You can harvest them on planets, certain planets. You can harvest them in space using minus mining stations. Um, and you can use minerals, a lot of minerals, uh, to turn them into those special resources. So, in a way, for large-scale economies towards the end of the mid-game, uh, minerals are going to be funneled to goods and alloys and also production of volatile moats and their and the other i'm just going to ah oh, that's better uh, lovely music but it's distracting me right next one's very important very important empire sprawl we'll talk about we'll talk more about this in the economics module basically you have an administrative capacity and each district on a planet so if we go to our planet earth We'll see all of these little things. So we can see city districts, generator districts, mining districts, and farmland. So agriculture districts. Um, and essentially, each district we build adds one to our empire sprawl. Each system we colonize adds two. Each colony world we colonize um, adds another two. So together Together, they all add up to what is our Empire Sprawl, which is there at the top, at 13. We have a capacity of 30. When you go above your capacity, you'll start to have skyrocketing costs for technology, traditions, uh, traditions are these ones, um, and also leader costs like scientists, um, and uh, and governors again. We'll go into that in far greater detail in other modules. So generally, it it's almost impossible to do, but um, keep as close to that capacity as you can uh, to avoid es escalating penalties. Uh, next th next few are really lovely and simple. Um, Empire systems, one system, um, and one colony. And you can see that all from there. So we are in one star system. That system is colonized. And it's Earth in the Sol system. We have 24 pups. And one star base. We can build two more. Not in this system. They have to. Be, it's only one per system. Uh, but we can support up to three. Um, and they are, they're only upgraded. We'll probably talk more about star bases in several of the, of the other modules. Naval capacity, uh, similar. You can build above these. It's just that you'll pay massive penalties in terms of increased upkeep for every station. So if I had five, for five star bases, for example, instead of the three, I'm going to play increased upkeep on all five, not just the two that breach the limit. So there we are. Top row. You've got time controls. Uh, so there are six levels of speed. Slowest, slow, normal, fast, super fast. And in demonstrating that, I've broken my pledge. Okay, we're now 10 days in the future and I've done nothing. Um, now we come to the outliner. Ooh. Ooh, the outliner. It's beautiful. The outliner is basically, at a glance, your entire empire. It's assets. Um, it's armies. Uh, ships for empire development. Military fleets. Uh, terraforming projects in progress 
um, integrations where you're absorbing via osmosis um, another star empire into your own. We'll talk all about that. That's to do with vassalage. We'll talk about that in another uh, module. Um, you can rearrange them. You can turn them off. So, for example, something that's quite common, if you have a lot of planets um, all in different sectors, you turn sectors off. We don't have any at the moment because we're only 10 days into the game. Um, so, but if we turn planets off, that would go shipyards off, that would go military bases and civilian ships. Our outliner is now beautiful because there's nothing for us to do. Uh, but we can't stick our head in the sand, so we're going to deal with that. Uh, music player, gorgeous. Um, and yeah, I've got some mods that uh, <laughs> include Mass Effect uh, as well as Interstellar. Um, such as. Oh no, I can't play them, otherwise, YouTube would demonetize me. Uh, but yeah, you can get them on the workshop, they're fantastic. Um, I'm running a few mods as well. I'll try and remember to, to mention them at the end of the video. Obviously, I'm doing this live. Uh, so, that's the outliner. It is immeasurably important. Left click to select, right click to locate. That ship is here. Okay? Simple. Right click, left click. Then we go down, we go down to um, map modes. So we're gonna press M for the map. This isn't really gonna show much because we don't know anyone else. Well, I'm gonna turn off the sectors map mode. We have one sector. It's the Earth sector. Um, so, I mean, th these buttons we'll be able to see when we get into contact, um, which will be another module. But basically these give you uh, by color, uh, very good indications of which empires like who, who might form an alliance, who might go to war, um, and be able to, to apply some soft power um, where needed. Trade. Trade we'll cover in another episode. This is just where to find all the information needed. Um, there's also a details map mode. That will suggest everything that is and can be harvested. Uh, green, you're harvesting it. White, it's not being harvested. Yellow, someone else is harvesting it. Um, you can hold Alt to turn that on. Hold it, let it go. Uh, go to, so hotkey for that is backspace. So if you're like, oh, oh no, I'm in Nithrin's expanse. Where's Earth? Backspace, there it is. Ah, oh, how beautiful. Um, search, you can search for anything. Anything. Uh, let's search for Europa. Oh, it's only star systems. Sol. Found it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, and then additional buttons. Help. Cookie time. Yes. So, I, d I don't know why it's doing that. That is one of the mods that I'm using. Um, but yeah, the entire wiki for this entire game. You can search it. Want to know more about Unity? Uh, let's let's learn about Unity. Oh, actually, this ah, oh, it's in the economy. See, see. Ah, oh, love it, love it, love it. You can get all the information you need. So, read it. If at any point you thought, what does this do? Read it. It's amazing. Um. And the main menu, also via the escape button. Okay, now we come to a pre your preset command groups. Uh, this happens every game. You can cancel it if you want. Um, but it will take your home planet, your starting world, at one. And this is the same as left clicking it on the outliner. Uh, your starting fleet at two. The first fleet. At three, a science vessel. What do they do? Well, we'll figure that out in future modules. And four, your construction ship. You can, of course, change these. Um, it's pretty simple. If I wanted to change this to five, press control, hit the number five. Now it's also in four and five. Hooray! Um, in, uh, if I did this and I press this to control four, then it's just taken over. Obviously, I don't have too many. <laughs> I don't think I have more than five things. Oh, I, I've got that. I've got the shipyard. All right. So now I've put the shipyard on four. Great. 
How effective. Right, okay. We're going to take a short break now. When we're back, we are going to go through perhaps the most important uh, part. It's all hidden away. It is... The sidebar. Enjoy an ad. We'll be right back. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've had a wonderful time skipping the ad, likely. <laughs> right. The sidebar. We're going to go from the top down. And we're going to sort of glance on the topics, but we'll go into further detail in the future episodes. That's a running theme in this, in this particular module. So, first of all, how do you get it? You mouse over. Great. If you want it to stay out like this, it's quite tricky, but click that. Oh, no. Other way around. <laughs> if you want it to stay just like that. If you're pro, and you, you know from the icons, great. If you want it to pop out, do that. Great. So, contacts, situation log. Oh, it's situation log. Market, planets, expansion planner. That's a nice little feature. Policies, edicts, traditions, ship designer, fleet manager, technology factions, blah, blah, blah. blah. Uh, market, yeah, you can do that, or you can click on any of these. Great, it's the same thing. You can even see that it's uh, it's the market because it's listed there. Uh, tab um, opens the situation log, or rather, it would. Does it not tab anymore? Oh no, it's F two. Huh. All right, F two. So uh, this is because we have democracy. Basically, in the situation log, we will we will come back to to contact. I promise. Um, in the situation log, we'll have everything that's going on in your empire. Uh, anomalies that you've um, discovered while scanning alien worlds, um, and any special projects that uh, your empire wants to undertake or investigate uh, will all be here. And there'll be a wonderful situation log updated uh, audio cue as well. Contact F1. Everyone you've ever met in the galaxy. Obviously, we haven't met anyone. Uh, in 10 days, uh, I imagine the crew is still trying to find uh, their living quarters um, on the ship. <laughs> so, we haven't really done anything yet. When we do, we will see all of the other empires and be able to chat with them and exert our diplomatic objectives upon them. Um, so that's the contact screen. Of course, we can filter out. Others will be, uh, like, um, canvasseries, uh, which are basically big fleets of traders, um, like the Bentuzi, and curator vaults as well, and artisan troops and, and other things like that, which we'll talk about. So we'll turn that off. Primitives! Uh, pre-FTL civilizations that you might come across. Uh, fallen empires... And uh, for uh, if for multiplayer games, um, if it's if you only want to focus on the the other player, if it's a one v one, for example, um, you can turn off everything apart from that. Um, well, that's just everything that classes as an empire. Um, and uh, and yeah, so you can just uh, see that. I don't know why you do that, but uh, it's all good. Okay, that's contact. F three market. We already done that. Just click on one of these. Four planets and sectors. This. Is wonderful screen. It shows all of your planets at the moment. Of course, we've only got one with our 24 pops on it. And it shows its economy. All of it. it per month, it's producing 31 science across three disciplines. Nine unity, two food, seven alloys, and plus three minerals. Why, why are 24 minerals being consumed? By jobs. Jobs to create alloys and consumer goods. So there we go. So at the moment, we're just about breaking even on that. Jobs. You can see four is being consumed by jobs. Which jobs? These ones. <laughs> is it Unity as well? I'm going to go slightly off topic and just go to Earth and see... Um, enforces... Oh, that's just free. That's just free Unity. Don't have to spend toasters on it. Great. Um, so that's planets and sectors. When you get sectors, uh, when, when we talk about expansion, we'll, we'll probably, you know, we'll get some sectors and we'll uh, have a look at those. Expansion planner, great. All the planets that we have discovered that are surveyed, or we could say are currently colonizable. At the moment, zero. Um, this is our habitability. 
So you can colonize everything from 20% up. Your people won't be very happy, as in they will be very unhappy, but you can do it. Um, ideal is 80%, uh, which is going to be a, a, for our species, is going to be a continental world. 100% um, will be a Gaia world, or if you've gotten into the game and you can increase habitability of certain worlds through technologies. Um, and we can, if we have multiple species, um, and the moment we only have one, we can actually tailor it to which species we want to use to be the pioneers to colonize a new world. So, for example, if we had a wonderful, amazing species that were great at living on barren, lifeless rocks, we could select them, and then this would turn into 80 or 100, and we can go and colonize it. So that's that. And now, and now we get complicated. Policies. Policies. We are not going to go through all of them. Uh, it's just no, 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 no way. We will do that in other modules. Um, edicts. Edicts are a wonderful way to uh, sort of highlight particular goals of your administration. Uh, so only one is available because we can only afford it now with 90 influence. Um, and that's Map the Stars. Um, and that lasts for 13 years. It will give us bonuses to survey speed and the discovery of anomalies. Um, anomalies, when we talk about uh, sort of colonization and exploration, we'll um, get into uh, what anomalies are and what they do. Um, but that's all made better if we choose to map the stars. Traditions and relics. We've seen that. Relics, sep that's a separate, separate bit of a module. Don't worry about that. Um, ship designer. This will be covered in detail in the fleet module. Fleet manager. Wonderful screen to take designs that you have made in the fleet designer and create fleets of them. Um, that hopefully will uh, complement each other in such a way as to have a balanced and specialist fighting force. Technology. It's this screen. Factions. We don't have any. Uh, yes, of course. Yes, blah, blah, blah. Um, factions. Basically, uh, think of them as pressure groups within your population. Um, some of them will support what you're doing. Some of them will be very unhappy with what, they do, with what you're doing. Uh, we'll talk more about that in um, a future episode. Just a quick note on these icons. So obviously these are the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different ethics um, that define a person's overall approach to what society should be. Um, and now we can see what a pops, like if, if a new pop, when a new pop is, is born, um, what likelihood there will be for them to adopt certain practices. Um, at the moment, they will only adopt xenophile and egalitarian because there's 0% for everything else. It is quite likely that the new pop will have an egalitarian ethos. It is relatively likely that they will be um, xenophilic. We can do things to improve these in another episode. Uh, then we have claims. That's if we wanted to go to war, we would claim their systems formally. And then go to war over it to enforce our claim. Species. You start with the species. Um, in the relevant module, we will actually talk about um, uh, what these traits are. Uh, how to create new species. And also, in the course of the game, to actually modify them with genetic engineering. Oh, yeah. So... We only know one species. If we wanted to see all the species we've, we we are aware of, uh, we can click gal galaxy, but obviously we don't know any yet. And then finally, leaders. So we have four kinds of leaders. Governors look after sectors. Scientists deal with science vessels, UNS Tradewind here, um, and also the research cores of the Empire. Admirals lead fleets. Generals lead ground armies. Uh, we'll talk uh, very much about leaders, particularly in these two um, uh, areas, in the crises and contacts 
Um, and also probably the fleet one as well for admirals. So, that's it. That is everything you need to know about where everything is in Stellaris. This video is the better part of an hour. And, <laughs> and we have just scratched the surface. I very much hope that you found this useful to you. Whether you're a veteran player or um, someone who's, who's just starting out. Who maybe finds the game a bit overwhelming. Um, this might serve to make it seem more overwhelming. But do not worry. The, 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 the mechanics uh, of which the interfaces for I have just shown you are very well balanced. Um, in my opinion anyway complimentary and when you get it you get it if you get what I mean <laughs> all of my content is made possible thanks to the wonderful patrons you are seeing uh, along the bottom of your screen now if you'd like to join from just one dollar a month to help me make more great content like this well i think it's great but i, I guess that's going to make people dislike it now um then please uh do press the patreon logo that's going to be uh, appearing on your screen shortly uh, of course, all necessary information is in the description down below, and you can contact me to suggest future content at write to novacane at gmail.com. Until next time, then, my name has been Nova Kane. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I hope that you're very well, and I wish you. A wonderful good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and of course, good night.